stories that my father related to me was that when they would go out there, uh, there was about four or five fellows in my dad's group, and uh, among them was one fellow by the name of Leonidas Dennis, and he ended up, uh, well, was a close friend in Cedar Rapids of my folks and Grant, and he ended up city engineer in Marshalltown. Uh, I don't recall some of the other friends that they had, but they palled around like young people do, and they went out there swimming, and one of them found an iron pot or kettle, and uh, they and it was in the water. Someone had thrown it in there, and uh, he just for the fun of it put it on his head. I don't remember which one did this, but uh, they got to laughing about it, and then they found some seaweed to put over his head and then put the pot on, then smeared himself with all this shoreline black mud, and uh, they got to laughing about it. So then they thought they would carry this choke a little farther, and uh, they made uh, one of these foot deals like Grant Wood made for his own home, and they made a couple of these with leather straps, put them on the foot, and then with the other guys hanging on to the fellow, he could take eight foot steps out there in the mud around the shore of Cook's Pond. And uh, then uh, my dad being the photographer took pictures of it. And uh, I don't know the story, but I remember when going out there later and they were all, all listening to the people that were looking at these footprints in the mud around the shore and all the comments that were said when I was pretty young at the time. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Bigfoot way back then. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Be because you're age different, did you ever know Grant in later years on a first-hand basis? Yes. You would have been a, 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 a young very boy. Young. Yes. And, but, and did he, uh, did he treat you as uh, your dad's son? I mean, he was extremely nice. And he even suggested that I take up art at one time. That was a mistake. But he gave me a palette that I wish that I had kept because it was interesting uh, the way he used that. And he explained some things to me. And he gave me this when he was living here at his home on uh, 2nd Avenue and 11th Street or so. Mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, did you find him an easy person to like? Real, real, yeah. very friendly, mm -hmm. yes, and clever. He had his own uh, tricks and, and stunts that he had to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and Grant and your dad had been close friends throughout yes. this, kind of like uh, buddies, yeah. good yes, buddies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I had read someplace that uh, your dad even helped him in when he was having economic problems. Your yes. dad used to help him out by That's right. giving a little something, carry him yes, over. Yes, because he had a mother to support, and she uh, uh, was what a, a nice lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in fact, and later on, didn't your Grant and, and uh, didn't Grant and your dad share an office downtown? That I don't know that that was true. My dad. And my grandfather, uh, Albert Hansen, was a half owner in the Hansen Holden Company. And it was similar to where my dad ended up at Morris Sanford Company in uh, office supplies mm -hmm. and so forth. But my grandfather sold his half and moved to California, and I think it was about 1923. But uh, my grandfather lived in Kenwood Park, Iowa, as people know, halfway between Cedar Rapids yeah. and Marion. But your dad, uh, he did have a photo shop downtown. You know, he, he went to work for Morris Sanford Company after my grandfather sold out, and he sold office supplies. And uh, one man that was uh, sell, selling camera equipment uh, wished that he could trade places, and they made the arrangements, and my dad had the photographic department for over 35 years. Did you did your dad do a lot of uh, photographic work himself? Yes, and once was he good at, I mean, yes, to the point was, where he would be hired to do? Yes, he was uh, uh, often hired by the uh, 
Path A News or someplace like that. And uh, I accompanied him on one of the occasions. And there was a, a big, long, endless belt or something at Quaker Oats, way up in the air. And it was installed to move grain to the different tubular elevators. And uh, he was hired by the newsreel to take pictures. And he often took pictures of floods and any other occasion that mm -hmm. would arise. Mm -hmm. uh, back to Grant, uh, do you suppose he threw away a lot of his early paintings? Well, this is one of the things that where my mother would step in. Anything that he didn't like and would discard, my mother was great at saving. And uh, at one time we had, I think, 42 Grant Wood paintings. And uh, they weren't signed, or many of them were not signed, but uh, it was interesting how uh, they were uh, the old style. And uh, I guess it's a known fact that when he went to Europe and studied in France, the, uh, he was told or by someone that he would have to develop his own style, and he certainly did. He decided to make a tree instead of the leaves on it, to make it like a ball, and uh, it paid off, though. Who, uh, who is this, Don? That is my mother, uh, Vida, pronounced, uh, spelled Vida. I used always refer to it as Vida Hansen, and uh, that was a picture that my father took of her, and uh, later Grant Wood, made a painting of that, and uh, she was not too happy with it because she wore glasses from the time she was about 15 years old, and uh, then later in life, some lady asked if she would sell a Grant Wood painting to her, and she came out to the house, and she had a liking for this painting of my mother, a side view, just head and shoulders, and uh, they came to a, an agreeable price. And when she was uh, paying my mother by check, she said, I suppose you're wondering who's buying this painting? And she said, I assumed that you were. And she said, no, I'm buying it for Wayne King, the orchestra leader, lived at that time in, I believe, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Later on, it was sold to some banker in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, that's where it's now in the museum, art museum in Phoenix. And uh, my sister stopped by to see it many years ago, but uh, I haven't seen it for years. In, in this, this? This is it was a, a painting that I ended up uh, donating to the Cedar Rapids Art Museum about three or four years ago. And it was about, uh, I guess, 11 or 14. And it was considered quite valuable. And I had I known that it was as valuable as that, <laughs> I might have thought differently about it. But I'm glad that the art museum got it. Yes. And, and I imagine that is a, a painting that where you got the idea from you boys uh, skinny dipping down in might the... It might be. <laughs> it might be. I have no idea who the subject is, but I assume it's Indian Creek because Grant Wood and my dad and the whole bunch, uh, there was at, back years ago a path along each side of Indian Creek, and those, I'm sure, have disappeared. Yeah. And, what are we looking That's, at here? <clears throat> when my brother was born, uh, Mrs. Wood, Grant's mother, suggested to my mother that if she would touch the baby's forehead and make a kind of a circle with her finger and do that occasionally, the baby would have curly hair. And when my brother was born, his hair was straight as a string, just like mine is. So you can see that Grant made curly hair on the kid. Here's Grant's signature in the back of the baby. But my mother and dad were great at reading a lot. And uh, so we used those for other book uh, identification. Yeah. And uh, this is just something that Grant, in his spare time, 
I don't remember what it was, but he, uh, he had a painting that he was making called Old King Cole, Merry Old Soul, and he baked a pie and, and so forth. And this, I feel it was connected with it. Uh, India ink sketches that he would do and uh, just in his spare time. And he certainly did a nice job. Did uh, Grant take a job as an art instructor at Jackson School? I don't you, know. You don't? I, I, I'm not familiar yeah. with that. Yeah. But uh, he spent quite a bit of time at McKinley School, and uh, they still have, uh, I believe, some material there that uh, he had done. In, in, in the, uh, taught at the uh, UNI for? Yes. And I'm not familiar with that. The last time that I saw Grant alive was uh, when my dad and mother and I were invited to go to Iowa City to meet Grant Wood's wife. And uh, it wasn't long after that that, uh, that he passed away. So when, when you were in, oh, say, 18, 19, yeah. Did you still have a relationship with Grant? Did he remember you? And, oh, and, yes, uh, yes. But we weren't yeah. close. We went our separate ways, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we were, yeah. the family and so on still stayed and had lots to talk over whenever yeah. we got together. Uh, what, was, what was his wife's name? You remember? No, I don't. Sarah? Was it? I don't, right yeah. at the moment, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. No, nice lady. But she was not uh, accustomed to his lifestyle, I should put it that way, yeah. And was, would you have been in service when he passed away? No, I think, well, I can't remember. 50, 51, I think, when he passed for, away. For, 42, I oh, think. Oh, was it 42? Yeah. No, after that, I went to service because I attended his funeral in Anamosa. Yes. Uh, did uh, did the uh, he remain close to your folks uh, all through his lifetime, yes. or did he kind of drift away? No, well, they were whenever they would get a chance. Certainly. So, they, so when he became famous, he didn't forget who his no, friends, no, not friends a bit. Were. He was as common as an old shoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This here was a book written by artist in Iowa mm -hmm. by Mr. Garwood. Yes, yeah, he uh, came to my house and spent a great deal of time uh, with my mother uh, talking about uh, the earlier days of Grant Wood and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a slight error in everything. He promised to show her the uh, manuscript before it was published. And uh, there was a period of time when uh, Nan Wood and my mother uh, were rather on the outs and it took a great deal of uh, work by my mother to get back smooth to show. And Mr. Garwood ended up apologizing for not checking some of his notes that he made because in the book, it's an interesting book, but he made some mistakes and uh, uh, didn't uh, set well with my mother. Mm -hmm. uh, I read that book. That I would, you had uh, loaned it to me. Yeah. It is a very, very interesting book. I checked at the Cedar Rapids Library, and they do not have it. So is that right? If it, I think it was written back in 1934. Yeah, and I found a lady that bought one, I believe, in Marion, at the used bookstore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, she bought one. This here is a, uh, is that a picture of uh, the painting. Grant in his studio? Oh, yes. And that, the only time I ever saw him, he was wearing that type of an outfit. He <laughs> Bib overalls. Was, he, was, yeah. he was comfortable yeah. from morning to night, yeah. yeah. Can you see the painting, Alan? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's, uh, Midnight Ride of Paul Revere is the name of the painting he was. Uh, Don, you and your sister Dawn, Dawn yes. was it? Uh, you ended up with a lot of Grant's work, 
later yes. in life, didn't you? It would still belong to my mother, uh, but unfortunately, uh, my mother had to go into, uh, after my father passed away, my mother had to go into a nursing home, and uh, after a period of time, I had to uh, just